of summer and those of you who haven't done that yet well this is coming up so anyway without further ado uh, let me pray lord i pray that everything we learn this sunday and the coming sundays stays with us for the future i pray that this church opens up soon so we can all have fellowship together lord and i pray that everything we do learn stays with us throughout this pandemic and up until it finishes and I pray that you help us become um, your followers and stronger followers, Lord. And I pray that even through these tough times, we remember your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. So um, the main thing I want to talk about today is transformation. And I think this is important to speak about because I feel like we all want to be like Jesus. And even God's determined to, um, to change us, to like become like his son. But I think working out how transformation happens and how the change happens is quite difficult. But I feel like um, the story of Zacchaeus kind of helps us understand that. And so um, we're going to read from Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. So, um, yeah, okay. Um, so it starts off by saying, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. 
All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. The son of man came to seek and to save the lost. So I think to help us understand this story, we have to kind of understand how he was perceived by his community around that time. And so um, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, but back then tax collectors were despised as traitors. And um, the Romans had problems collecting taxes from the cities they conquered. And so those people would buy and trade on the black market to evade the tax. And so a Roman official wouldn't be familiar enough with like the city underground and um, the black market to know where all the real money was. So instead they hired a native from the city that they conquered to collect the tax for them. And somebody who would know where the money um, in the underground and the black market would be hiding. And so the tax collectors were then given soldiers to assist them. And this meant the Romans didn't care how much extra money the tax collectors collected because as long as they got the money they wanted, then they would turn a blind eye. And so that meant that Zacchaeus's, well, most of Zacchaeus's wealth came from sending out his family and um, his friends to the Romans. And um, yeah, so Zacchaeus didn't care and he obviously loved money and that would be the only way he really considered to a being a tax collector because it's the most immoral thing, setting out all your family and friends. And so money had to be worth more to you than everything. And I think the Jewish Mishnah said that tax collectors were so loathsome that they shouldn't even be considered as people. And um, you were free to lie to tax collectors because lying to an animal is not a sin. And so I think that kind of gives you a glimpse of how unpopular Zacchaeus was. And um, even the fact he had to climb the sycamore tree, you know, if you were in a crowd with a short person behind you, you would just usually let them pass because it's not like it's going to block your view. But they intentionally like hip checked him and then let him go past. And I think that itself also shows how much he was despised. And so I think there are three main points we can take from this uh, passage. And so the first is that um, there's hope for transformation because Jesus doesn't see as a man sees and he can see beyond our failures and weaknesses. So um, in this case, he sees Zacchaeus as more than a sinner. And although he loves money and lived such a terrible lifestyle, Jesus could see a willingness and desire to change. And he saw that he was a human being created in the image of God. And so Jesus chose to focus on the positives of Zacchaeus' life rather than the negatives. And so while people might see Zacchaeus as a tax collector and only see the negatives, and they kind of see him as a man who has no hope to change um, and a failure, I think um, Zacchaeus himself probably saw himself like that as well. But Jesus saw the potential for change. And I believe that's true of us as well. Because sometimes, you know, despite the things we do and all the negatives, I feel like we can just kind of capitalize on those and conclude that there's no hope for us to change. But I think it's important to know Jesus sees us differently. And so we have to try and see ourselves as Jesus sees us as well. And um, yeah, so with, with Jesus, there is hope to transform. And so, yeah, this is shown when he goes to eat with Zacchaeus. And like eating with somebody is a sign of like intimate fellowship and it shows you're you're embracing them and so yeah i think the last line is that he's come to seek that which is was lost and so these sinners are the very people that jesus has come to seek like zacchaeus and yeah and so um the second point i think we can take from this is that there's hope of transformation because Jesus always takes the first step to come to us. And I feel like this is what makes Christianity different from other religions. And um, as John said in his first letter, chapter 4, verse 19, 
and we love because he first loved us. And so I think it's Jesus' coming to us which gives us the strength to change. And so we can't change ourselves. And I don't think Jesus expects us to change ourselves. But instead he wants us to allow him to enter his lives, into our lives even. And so in Zacchaeus' case, it wasn't Zacchaeus' idea to invite Jesus to his house. You know, he called to him. And he didn't even consider himself as worthy to have Jesus in his house. But Jesus chose to go to Zacchaeus' house and call to him and dine with him. And, you know, I think it's a sign of intimacy without any accusation or condemnation compared to what everyone else thought of him. I think it's this acceptance and love that made um, Zacchaeus confess his sins and decide to change. And um, the third point I'd say is that there's hope for transformation because Jesus accepts us without precondition. And so it's not our effort to obey the law and you know follow all the rules that we think the Bible sets out for us, but our encounter with Jesus that transforms our lives. And so we obey not to be accepted or loved, but because we are accepted and loved. And even after one meeting with Jesus, Zacchaeus was completely changed and offered to pay back the money he had taken straight away and to change his lifestyle. And it's important to realize that this happened without Jesus asking him to. Like he didn't tell him, oh, do this and you'll go to heaven or anything like that. But just off one meeting with Jesus and, you know, eating together, he he kind of embraced Jesus' love and he changed and so I think to apply to our lives, there's three main things. So the first is to come to Jesus as we are and that he doesn't judge you, but he embraces you and he knows your weaknesses and that you can't live and do without him. And I think change only occurs by his grace alone. And so like Zacchaeus, once you've tasted the love of Jesus, everything else you thought was attractive becomes irrelevant or less important. And that's what happened in Zacchaeus' life, I think. Money lost its attractiveness and its appeal. And I feel like whatever's kind of leading us in life right now, whatever main thing we have that we think um, is the most important thing for us to live for, I feel like once you do take get a taste of Jesus, that becomes, yeah, it just becomes much less important. And I think the second thing is that we need to remember that we don't, um, need to do anything to get the attention of Jesus and that he's always attentive to you and knocking at your door and that he's a coming Jesus with a lot to give I think nowadays we're so occupied and don't give our attention to him but we need to throw ourselves in the open arms of Jesus and um, yeah just like Zacchaeus as I said earlier he, he didn't ask for Jesus' help or anything like that at all. Um, Jesus just came to him. And the final thing is that I think we need to stop thinking that we should somehow be better before we come to Jesus. And I think it's important to know that you'll never be good enough for Jesus. You know, he is perfect. And I feel like it's a bit intimidating sometimes because we feel so sinful in comparison. But he wants us to come as we are with all our weaknesses and flaws. And it's from meeting him and experiencing his unconditional love that changes you. And so like Zacchaeus, all the things we used to think are so dear becomes nothing compared to the joy we find in Jesus Christ. And yeah, so I think we'll conclude with prayer. Father God, I pray that you help us open our hearts to you. I pray that like Zacchaeus, we kind of humble ourselves and remember how much greater you are than us, Lord, and that we never feel um, intimidated by your presence, Lord, but instead we're drawn to you, Lord, and help us recognize that without you we are lost, Lord. And Lord, I pray that through any judgment we feel um, from other people, we remember that you see us for more than that, Lord, and you see for the, the positives in us, Lord, and I pray that you help us to see the same in ourselves and uh, 
the others around us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, thank you.